race for the Republican nomination, as well as much, much more with Republican presidential candidate Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Senator, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, I have to say, when it comes to George W. Bush and when it comes to Donald Trump, I don't know who you disagree with more. <laughs> Well, where do you come down uh, on this uh, debate? You know, I think that uh, obviously we have to start with terrorists are always primarily yes, responsible for attacks. And once we get beyond that, there are some parallels, of course. I mean, going into 9-11, the biggest uh, failure of the Bush administration, but really of the FBI, was that we caught the 20th hijacker a month in advance. Dr. Rice was silent. Yeah. yeah. He wrote seven, the FBI agent that caught him wrote 70 letters to FBI headquarters saying, we should look at this guy's computer. We should get a warrant. And we never did. And that was a huge failure. And I never quite understood why someone wasn't fired over 9 11. I still ask that question. Over 9 11, no one was ever fired. And there were some mistakes. I mean, we also had a report coming out of Arizona of people trying to fly planes but not learn how to land them. So there obviously were some mistakes. The parallels. The differences are, though, I do agree with what Jeb Bush said, Hillary Clinton was specifically asked for security, specifically and denied. I asked her in person, did you read the cables? And she kind of acted like she had, was kind of too busy and way too far below her. But the Secretary of State is responsible for providing the defense for the embassies. And the fact that they specifically requested not once, but dozens of times for more security does lead me to believe that she does have culpability for what happened at Benghazi. Well, it would seem your, your answer is at least consistent. You're, you're holding both administrations accountable for, for what happened. Let me ask you, though, is this um, below the belt for Donald Trump to bring this up? His, he, he's saying, look, Jeb Bush said my brother kept us safe, and that's not true. I think Donald Trump's a bit of a loose cannon, to say the least. And I do agree with Jeb Bush, and I was smiling when the ad came on, because I do think that I worry about Donald Trump being in charge of the nuclear arsenal, because I worry about him being in charge of our diplomacy. I think the level of maturity and the level of sort of vulgarity with his interactions with other candidates is something, it's not really doesn't rise to the level of someone I want, would want representing us internationally. I want to ask you about um, legislation that you're introducing about a big issue uh, before the Congress right now, the, the debt ceiling and whether or not the nation uh, should raise the debt ceiling to pay off the dates. It's called Cut, Cap, and Balance. It would introduce $207 billion in cuts while preserving spending for Medicare, Social Security, military pay, and veterans benefits. Where does the $207 billion in cuts come from? Well, I've previously introduced cuts of over $500 billion, and I have three different budgets where we do cuts. Some of the cuts would be eliminating corporate welfare, Department of Commerce, 30 or $40 billion there that if it was gone, you wouldn't know it was gone. Um, there are several ways we could take things back to the state, such as Department of Education, nearly $90 billion, $100 billion, Department of Energy, many things I don't notice if they were gone. But the main point here is, and this is what I hear from the grassroots Republicans across the country, they're frustrated with official Republicans in Washington because we control the House, we control the Senate, and we're doing nothing to control the spending. So we should use the leverage of trying to hold up on raising the debt ceiling and insist on spending reform.